Hello, in this video, we'll be talking about conical scan tracking. Uh, so, like uh, sequential lobbing, conical scan tracking also uh, shares time, shares a single antenna beam to obtain the angle measurement. So, in the previous video where I was explaining about sequential lobbing, I had also said about the conical scanning, the main difference between sequential lobbing and conical scan. So, here um, So the problems of sequential lobbing was we have the angle of beam which is greater than the angle of error and then we have to select a pencil beam. Pencil beam means very narrow beam width pattern and the other problem was focus is less because uh, the single beam is switched between only four positions. Okay, So the focus is decreased. So another problem is it identifies the direction and not the position. So only from which direction is the target uh, coming. Okay. So which switching position will give you maximum signal and then what is the direction. So exact position is not given. And then uh, the application of this is ground-based radar tracking system. Now let us go move to conical scanning. So the main uh, logic we saw in the previous uh, video. So this is the uh, lobe switching or sequential lobbing. This is for one angle coordinate where two one single beam is switched between two positions and then uh, you get which signal which beam which, which beam position gives you the higher amplitude signal so for two angle coordinates you need four positions right right up left down again right up left down and so on so instead of switching in four different directions using four feed horns for a single from a single antenna we can use one feed horn right so as i drew in the previous figure so one horn sorry one uh, parabolic antenna i would imagine so the feed is here so if this is the axis switching if this is the switching axis so the feed horn would be squinted off axis okay and then it will keep rotating like this. so this is the path of the lobe tip. okay so we have a uh, f one feed horn it is in a single antenna unlike sequential lobbing where we have four feed horns for four different positions so one feed horn which is quinted off axis okay so that is conical scanning so here you can see this is the target axis so point and this is the target axis so this is the rotation axis okay so and this is the beam axis okay so this beam uh, will keep uh, rotating like this okay so in whichever position you get better signal that position would be taken into consideration that degree of rotation will be taken into consideration okay. so here uh, how do we use the antenna the conical scan antenna is parabolic parabola reflector antenna with an off offset rear feed uh, rotated about the axis of the reflector okay offset in the sense quinted off axis like how we drew in the previous uh, PPT, P P previous slide. Sorry. Now another important uh, word you have to remember is mutating feed. Okay, so the feed used here in conical scan is mutating feed. There is another feed which is called as rotating. Now what's the basic difference? So when uh, in conical scan we need rotation of the beam, right? So in mutating feed, uh, the advantage is it maintains the plane of polarization. So if this is the antenna and this is the beam. And suppose here is the target. Okay. So it will rotate. Okay. So while rotating, the plane of polarization would be maintained. Okay. So it doesn't change with the rotation. Okay. So that is the advantage of mutating feed. The only thing is it requires a fixed flexible joint and it requires RF switches. Rotating field is uh, feed is it rotates where the polarization also rotates. So here a rotary joint or a mechanically rotating joint is required. Okay. So why is mutating feed preferred? Because it maintains the plane of, plane of polarization. Okay. So here whatever we use is mutating feed. So the parabolic uh, antenna feed can be a rear feed designed for mechanical convenience. So when the feed is designed to maintain the plane of polarization as it rotates about the axis, it is called mutating feed, right? 
this uh, rotating feed does not maintain the plane of polarization. So hence we prefer mutating feed for conical scan tracking better. Now the problem is another problem with rotating feed. Is, suppose uh, the target is fixed. Okay, the mutating feed. Uh, when we use mutating feed, uh, the plane of polarization is maintained. So even if the target is fixed, the uh, polarization since it is not changed, there will not be any issue. Okay. But in case of rotating feed, what will happen is the polarization will also rotate, rotate. And then it causes the amplitude of the target echo signal also to change with time. So even if the target is stationary on the axis, because the polarization changes for the rotating feed, the amplitude of the target echo signal changes. Okay, so that's the problem with rotating feed. So that's why mutating feed is preferred, though it is more complicated than rotating feed because in mutating feed we need um, flexible RF joint, right? So, but in uh, rotating field, we need only a mechanically rotatory, uh, rotary joint. So that's why we prefer mutating field here. So this is the block diagram of conical scan tracking radar. You can see certain motors here. So this is the scan motor. The same motor is used as reference generator for getting the angle errors. And then the transmitter um, section is connected to this rotary joint of the antenna. The typical observation rate is uh, rotation speed is 30 revolutions per second okay, for this conical scan um, antenna. 30 revolutions, 3 zero revolutions per second. Now the same motor that provides a conical scan rotation here uh, of the antenna beam also drives a two-phase reference generator where the electrical outputs of this reference generator at conical scan frequency, that is FS. Okay, so at conical scan frequency, the electrical outputs uh, are uh, received, which are 90 degree apart. So you can see sine 2 by FST and cos 2 by FST. So these two outputs serve as the reference signals to extract the elevation and azimuth errors. Okay. So that is, you can see here. Okay, so these are the given as inputs to elevation and azimuth uh, phase sensitive detector. So these are two are phase sensitive detectors. Now the received echo signal is fed to the receiver uh, from this antenna uh, via these two rotary joints. Okay, so that is not shown here. Okay, so rotary joints. So one rotary joint permits motion in azimuth and another in elevation. Okay, now this receiver, as we see, so it is just one block which is written here, but this receiver is super electrode receiver. Okay, now the error signal which is extracted in the video uh, after the second detector here is given to a range gate. Okay. So this single target is put into track by having the receiver scan a range gate to search for the target and uh, lock onto it. So what this range gate does is, so it will have a gate, fixed gate, and it will have a early gate and it will have a late gate. Okay. So we will see if the echo signal is aligned along this gate. So Tra range gate I'll be explaining in the next video. So imagine this is the echo signal received and this is the range gate which we have maintained in the receiver section. So we have to see if these two lines are aligned or not. If it is not aligned, it will give you an error signal, otherwise it will not. Okay? So that's how range gate is used to get the error signal. So this range gate continuously tracks in range, the target in range. Okay, So range gate eliminates the noise and excludes all the other targets which are there in the vicinity of the desired target. This error signal from the range gate is compared with both elevation and uh, azimuth reference signals in the angle error detectors. So these are nothing but phase sensitive detectors. Okay. So the phase sensitive detector as we know is a nonlinear device where input is mixed with the reference signals. Okay. The magnitude of DC output which is obtained after this phase sensitive detector is amplified and that is proportional to the angle error. So this is amplified and then that sign which is obtained, uh, it indicates the direction of the error. So this angle error outputs which are amplified is then sent to the uh, this elevation and azimuth servo motors. So these servo motors now switch tune, mechanically change the position of the antenna so that it points to the desired axis of the target. The antenna axis is maintained towards the target axis. 
So this is how a uh, conical scan block diagram works. Okay. Now, yeah. So that's all about conical scan tracking. Mm. Yeah, we'll see the same things once more. So if the antenna is small, it is easier to rotate the dish, right? So which is offset rather than the feed. Thus avoiding the problem of rotary or flexible RF joint in the feed. This, and then we saw this. The same model which is used for conical scan rotation of the beam also drives a two-phase reference generator, which are 90 degree apart in phase, which where we saw here sine 2 pi FST and cos 2 pi FST. Right? Now these two outputs serve as the reference to extract the elevation and azimuth errors. So one feature which is not found in other radars is means of extracting the conical scan modulation or error signal. That is the servo motor system which we see, right? And the reference signal generation now is not there in other tracking systems. And this error signal is compared with the elevation and azimuth reference signals, right here. Uh, yeah, here. So this error signal which is obtained from the range gate is compared with the reference signals, right? Uh, in the phase sensitive detectors. Now this uh, EIF will give you more clear picture about the conical scan. You can see the target is here and this is the rotation. The lobe is moving around this pattern, right? So this is how the rotation happens. So this uh, blue color thing is what is our actual lobe, right? So this lobe keeps rotating. And then you can see exactly 270 degree. 270 degrees is the closest to the target, right? You can see at 270 degree, the signal received is highest. We measure in dB, the amplitude is measured in dB, correct? So this information would be noted down and then we'll conclude that at this position, we get more signal from the target and then target is closer to this point. Okay, so this is how conical scan works. I guess this would have given you much more clear picture, right? So that was all about conical scanning. Thank you. In the next video, we'll discuss about range gate, okay? Uh, thank you then.